Welcome everyone to Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0.2.0. That is the four science update that has recently been dropped. Last episode I built this rocket designed to get our Kerbal to the moon's surface and safely return them back to Kerbin. And you can check out that video if you so desire, but this episode is going to focus on getting this rocket to orbit. Now we are going for a mission. We're going to go for the perfect circle to establish an orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis and periapsis between 99 kilometers and 101 kilometers. And going into orbit is something we've looked at before. You can check out the video up here if you are interested in looking at that. But we're also going to be going into a more precise orbit this time, and I think a more efficient orbit. We're going to be taking advantage of the fact that we have these throttleable liquid fuel boosters as opposed to the SRBs that we had before. But uh, actually, there's one other thing I want to show you before we launch. There is a light bug right now. If I click on the lights button, they kind of flash once and then they're off. I'll show you the workaround around that light bug in just a little bit, but I want to get ourselves into orbit first, so why don't we do that? So, we are at full throttle, so all we have to do is punch it. And we get our countdown, and we'll hit it again. Fire our engines, and we are off. Again, the idea here is I'm going to get myself to around. I'm going to actually go a little steeper this time, to about 75 meters per second, and then we're going to start pitching over. And then I'm going to lock it onto the prograde vector, maybe a little more over than that. There we go. And I got a nice heading of 90 degrees. Oh, so it's 89. Now it's back on 90. So I'll keep an eye on that. I like it to stay pretty much right at 90. And I'm going up a little more steeply than I've done in the past. Usually I start pitching over when I'm at about 50 meters per second. And the reason is, is because there is a thermal issue that starts to affect the parts, especially the batteries that are up here at the top. Um, this is actually a weird thing with this game. I don't know if it's something that's going to be addressed if it never used to happen with KSB-1, but it is happening with KSB-2. The very upper part of the atmosphere, whoa. There we go. All right, I got a stage. And also I'm going to wait for my, there, and then I'm going to start throttling down. And I'm going to keep this time to apoapsis at about a minute. And we're going to just kind of let this kind of go up. But as I was saying, I want to get out of the atmosphere fairly quickly because the temperature seems to build up in these fragile parts that are up here at the top. And when you're up at the top part of the atmosphere, you, if you're coming up very, very shallow, you might find them starting to want to explode on you. Uh, not entirely realistic. But at the same time, it is what it is. Oh, I got some science to do. Let's grab that. I think that's just a whole pile of zeros, but got the blinking out of the way. Because we don't have any new equipment. And again, what we're looking at is getting our apoapsis to about 100. And then we're going to cut our throttle while keeping this time to apoapsis a constant. Okay, we're pitching over a little more. We've just gone into orbit mode. A little more on the throttle. And there might be people saying, well, if you put a fairing around that, that would have taken care of your thermal problems. Uh, no, they don't. The fairings doesn't seem to help. Fairings seem to be of limited use actually right now in the game. Uh, so no fairings. Uh, that's just, that's, they, they don't help. They're just extra mass for no reason at this point. Uh, let's see, we're at 60 kilometers here. And this whole keeping the apoapsis relatively close, what you will be finding is that's starting to bring up your periapsis much more quickly. And that makes the whole, that increases the efficiency of this whole experience. Okay, again, I'm gonna reduce throttle a little bit. I wanna keep that apoapsis fairly close. Now that we're in the upper part of the atmosphere, I actually wanna let, let this time come down a little bit get closer to maybe around 50 seconds. And what this does is it keeps the apoapsis close, but allows me to build up that periapsis so that when I get, see here, let's keep it around 50 now, up a little bit. Um, when we get up to our actual insertion, doing the circularization, we'll have very little to have to put in in order to uh, get our orbit. And that makes the whole thing uh, more efficient. I need more throttle, come on. Noticing this time's coming down. 
More throttle. There we go. But that makes the whole thing more efficient and also makes it easier to get this perfect orbit. Okay, I'm starting to build up that time to apoapsis a little bit. That is good. But look at that periapsis climb. That's what I want to see. Okay, we're going to do throttle again. I'm trying to get this down to being a constant. 55 seconds, that sounds good. Maybe, maybe do this a little bit more with the mouse. Nicey nice, 55 seconds, we'll try and keep that a calm. But look at that periapsis climb. That's how you get yourself a nice, efficient orbital insertion. And I'm going to actually stop reducing throttle. I'm just going to let this go for now. I think, I think I'm accomplishing what I want. I want to push up this apoapsis up to about 100. I'm also coming very close to losing this stage. That's okay. Remember, part of the deal was to use this stage in the upper part of the insertion. Actually, looking at my orbital velocity, I might not need to be losing this stage. All right, let, periapsis is in the positive. Apoapsis is creeping up very, very slowly. And we're going to cut. Beautiful, just like that. Now, I still have 263 meters per second left in this stage. Um, I, 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 I could use it to help me get to the moon, but I don't need it. My periapsis is still in the atmosphere, so technically this would deorbit, though I'm not sure the game will take it out or not. Ooh, let's... Uh, do some more science. I think that is a whole bunch of zeros. It is. Yep. <laughs> Still zero science on that. Um, but I think I'm going to stage it anyway. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. Don't bother. But uh, just to sort of present the debris and make this look a little bit nicer. I know I don't need that fuel. And also, uh, you might not have done as an efficient an ascent as I did and may not have this available. I want to show that it is fine if you don't have that available. Okay, so now I'm just time warping till I get very close to my apoapsis. I'm noticing that, whoops. I'm noticing that I'm about to go into the dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the trick for dealing with the light bug so that the lights will be on if we end up in the dark. So the trick is to, I'm gonna pause the game just so that I'm, a, so I'm going to quit back to the main menu we're going to save on exit and then we're going to go back to our game load that auto save that it just made and now suddenly our lights if we take the blink off you'll see they are working so that's the workaround for the light part i'm just noticing the little cowling there disappeared on me when i did that in fact, it's gotten a little bit funky over here. Oh, well. <laughs> I hope that's just the only, not the only thing that's gone funky. All right. So we are about 30 seconds away. We can get a lot closer than this because we hardly have anything to put in. Look, our periapsis is 66 kilometers. We hardly have anything to have to put in here. Okay. So we're going to keep it locked on to prograde. And as we come in towards... About 10 seconds away. Let's see. Let's put in a little bit of fuel. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. Just a little bit of burning. And this is how you can get this orbit super precise. A little bit more. And watching those numbers. And boom, there we go. We got our contract for our precise orbital insertion. But what if our orbital insertion didn't go quite so well? Again, when you're starting out in this game, that is really, really common. So I'm going to show a situation here where things didn't go quite so well. So McBald here is trying to do the exact same thing, but unfortunately, he let his cap, he let his apoapsis get away from him instead of it's now like over 15 and a half minutes away rather than the few seconds that I was advising and let the apoapsis climb too far to like 121 kilometers. 
Also, never did get the periapsis up high enough either, it's too low. So what if you did your insertion ended up with something like this or something even worse? Can you still fix it? Well, of course you can. Once you are in orbit, you can relax, you can take your time, you can puzzle things out and think about what's going on. There isn't a rush anymore. There's nothing in the contract that said you had to do this right on your first try. All we have to do is get our apoapsis and periapsis between 99 and 101 kilometers. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's get into map view and take a look from here. And in fact, I'm gonna center this right here on Kerbin so we can see we're coming around this way and we're gonna be getting to our apoapsis first. Now, in order to affect a part of your orbit, what you always end up doing is going to the opposite side of the orbit and affecting your burn there. So always get used to that. If I want to affect my orbit here, I need to be over here. If I did a burn where I am right now, I'd be affecting the orbit on the opposite side. Since I'm getting to apoapsis first, Let's look at the opposite side, periapsis. That's the one I'm going to go for. So what I'd like to do is raise this periapsis to, well, at least 99 kilometers. So at apoapsis, I'm going to do a burn. What direction should the burn be? Well, the periapsis is too low. I need to add more energy to my orbit. And I add energy to the orbit by burning in a prograde direction. So all we're going to do is we're going to time warp over towards our apoapsis. So we're just, you know, a few seconds before. It doesn't, there's not going to be much of a burn. And if you miss it by a little bit, it isn't a big deal. We'll get ourselves there. Let's slow ourselves down. We uh, have to put in prograde direction. I'm already in prograde from having done my orbital insertion. And now I'm really going to look down here at my time to apoapsis. I'm about 20 seconds away. We can get ourselves a little closer than that. There we go. And as we close in here, we're now like seven, eight, somewhere around here. We're gonna give a little bit of throttle and we're watching that periapsis. And there, as soon as it hit 99 kilometers, I just pressed X and cut. So now my periapsis is okay. I could have watched it here or here. So let's get rid of that one. Let's look at our apoapsis. Our apoapsis is too high. So in order to bring it down, I need to remove energy from the orbit. And I do that by burning retrograde again if i'm going to affect my apoapsis i got to be on the opposite side of the planet so i need to get down here to my periapsis exactly the same idea get ourselves a little closer here okay do that. Now this time I want to burn retrograde to remove energy from the orbit and lower my apoapsis. Get ourselves a little closer. And again, this isn't going to be much of a burn. Not even really expending all that much fuel. So this isn't going to affect my moon mission or anything like that. And again, I don't know. After, you know, if you say, what am I, six, seven, sure, whatever. Let's start taking out some energy, bringing that apoapsis down until it's below 100. And there we go. We all done. Contract is now complete. Alrighty, so... Next step in all this is getting ourselves over to the moon. This is something I also talked about in a previous episode. You can check out the link up here. So I'm not going to go over how we get ourselves to the moon. Instead, what we're going to do is join me next episode. I'll be in orbit about the moon and we'll talk about how we get this thing down to the surface. And more particularly, how do we do ourselves a precise landing? I hope to see you then.